Hello, and welcome to a lecture on high Q oscillators. I'm Steve Ellingson. Here's an overview of this lecture. First, I'll talk about the need for improved frequency stability and accuracy. That is, frequency stability and accuracy that is better than what we can get from a unmodified LC feedback oscillator. The answer will be the crystal resonator, and I'll talk about that. I'll show how a crystal resonator can be introduced into a LC feedback oscillator, and I'll use the Colpitt's common base LC feedback oscillator that we developed in a previous lecture. Then a brief summary of crystal oscillator technology, and we'll conclude with a discussion of other resonator technologies beyond crystals. So first, the need for improved frequency, accuracy, and stability. An LC feedback oscillator using discrete inductors and capacitors is typically about 5% accurate in the first draft design. Now that means the intended frequency can be off by as much as 5% and to get a better frequency accuracy requires some hand tuning or some additional complex measures which increase the cost and complexity of the design and may not result in a sufficiently good result. But this just isn't adequate for many applications. Just to give you one, FM broadcast radio. That's in the frequency range 88 to 108 megahertz. Using channels which are about 200 kilohertz wide. Now, let's just pick a typical frequency in the band. That's uh, maybe 100 megahertz. 5% of 100 megahertz is 5 megahertz. And since the channels are 200 kilohertz wide, that's 25 channels. So an LC feedback oscillator is typically not going to be good enough for FM broadcast applications. What we'd prefer instead is accuracy to within some fraction of a channel, some fraction of 200 kilohertz. So for example, if we select 1% of 200 kilohertz as the accuracy requirement, that's 2 kilohertz and that's an accuracy of 0.002% or as frequency synthesis people like to refer to these things 20 parts per million. PPM is parts per million. So 0.002% is a 20 part per million accuracy in frequency. Now to achieve this with a LC feedback oscillator as we've been talking about them requires a different kind of resonator. The common solution is a crystal resonator. Now crystal resonator is typically made from quartz. The quartz is cut in a certain mechanical configuration that results in a particular frequency of resonance, 10 megahertz being a very common crystal frequency, and then is placed into a, a, a small container with uh, leads. So from an electrical engineering point of view, we can understand the quartz crystal resonator as an equivalent circuit, which I've shown here. So this is a very typical model to use for a quartz crystal resonator. In this case, for 10 megahertz, and I'm showing you what the equivalent circuit values uh, are in the caption of this figure. The way we display a crystal resonator in a circuit diagram is usually using a figure like this, although there are a few other uh, symbols that are commonly used. In any event, the idea is that quartz crystal resonator is a piece of quartz which has been cut to certain dimensions yielding a certain resonance such as 10 megahertz, other resonances are possible, and yielding a circuit diagram which looks like this. Now there are other equivalent circuits that apply for different cuts, but this equivalent circuit shown here is quite common. So how do we introduce this into an LC feedback oscillator? Well, let's start with the example that we have done in a previous lecture, the Colpitt's common base oscillator. Uh, the circuit diagram is shown here. I'm just reminding you of the frequency of resonance, and how that's calculated, at least approximately. And just remember, the way this works is that we have the Colpitt's tank. It's these components right here. And the output of the amplifier goes in this direction and the feedback path comes here and then goes back into the input of the amplifier. One way to introduce a quartz resonator into this circuit is to put the quartz in the feedback path. So when you put it in the feedback path that is essentially a very very tight filter 
in the feedback path, which then constrains the frequency to be within a very, very narrow range of values. So we're using the very high Q of the crystal resonator as a tight bandpass filter in the feedback path. So here's an overview of crystal oscillator technology. This is a viable technology up to about 250 megahertz or so. The equivalent circuit I showed you a few slides ago was 10 megahertz. 100 megahertz is common, and I've seen these implemented at frequencies as high as 250 megahertz with very high performance. Above that, you hit the physical limitations of quartz, crystal, mechanical device technology. At higher frequencies, we tend to use things such as dielectric resonator oscillators and yttrium iron garnet uh, resonators. I'll talk about those in just a moment. Crystal oscillators are an easy and low-cost method to get accuracy on the order of 0.001%, which is 10 parts per million. So it's fairly common and relatively inexpensive to buy a quartz crystal uh, to use as a resonator, which has an accuracy of 10 parts per million. Now, we saw from the example in the beginning of this lecture that that's plenty good for FM broadcast. And I'll tell you that 10 parts per million is a very typical spec for wireless communications applications. There are some applications which require higher frequency stability. For example, test equipment typically specifies at least 10 parts per million and, and maybe higher. For example, if you're actually doing frequency measurement, you want a frequency reference which is accurate to a degree which is much, much uh, finer than the frequencies you're trying to measure. Now, separately, we have improved frequency stability. Crystal oscillators are much more robust to changes in temperature than discrete L's and C's, but there's still significant drift in, in many cases, simply because temperature still has an effect. So there is some variation in frequency with temperature. To do better, we could use a device known as an oven-controlled crystal oscillator. Now note here about acronyms. Crystal oscillator is often abbreviated using the acronym XO. Why people use an X to represent the word crystal, I do not know, but the uh, uh, nevertheless, XO means crystal oscillator. So an oven-controlled crystal oscillator is OCXO, and that's simply a crystal resonator that has a heater attached to it. And the intent of the heater is to keep the crystal at a specific temperature. And if it's at a specific temperature and can, cannot change, then the stability becomes much, much greater. And in fact, the accuracy improves as well. So an oven-controlled crystal oscillator can achieve 0.1 parts per million and with much better stability. And this is typically the kind of thing you'd use in high-performance test equipment, especially for frequency measurement applications, although there are a few uh, communications and radar applications where you might want this kind of frequency control. Uh, this requires an oven, of course, and uh, an oven generates heat, and heat requires power. So the trade-off here is you get better performance, but it requires now additional power, and significant additional power, in fact, to run the, uh, the heater. A compromise is the temperature compensated crystal oscillator. Now TCXO does not have an oven. Instead, what it has is additional electronics that compensate for the actual physical temperature. So the idea is these additional electronics uh, somehow sense or respond to the actual temperature and then adjust the circuit to account for the effect of the temperature. So this is a compromise between a unmodified crystal oscillator and an oven controlled crystal oscillator. We don't get performance which is as good as an OCXO, but it's much better than a crystal oscillator, and it's not as expensive in terms of cost or power uh, as a OCXO. Some alternative resonator technologies. PZT is a common one. This is used in applications where you don't really need crystal oscillator performance, but you need something better than LC oscillator performance. So for example, these are commonly used in FM broadcast. Surface acoustic wave technology. This is a approach in which the resonance is actually created using a mechanical wave. We say an acoustic wave because it actually operates at acoustic frequencies, but it has a RF frequency resonance. So these are extraordinarily selective 
but they have very uh, high insertion loss. Relatively inexpensive, they work up to UHF. Dielectric resonator oscillators, these show up commonly in uh, SHF, maybe UHF as well. Uh, satellite communications, applications, uh, things of this nature. Not as good as quartz, but they work to much higher frequencies. Yttrium iron garnet is a very high performance resonator technology that works, again, in the SHF range. Uh, commonly used for high performance satellite communications applications. Test equipment at higher frequencies uh, can use yttrium iron garnet uh, resonators. Uh, relatively high cost, relatively high performance. And of course, there are many others. Basically, if there is a way to get an electrical resonance out of it, and that electrical resonance has a very high Q, it is something that could be used as a resonator. This concludes this lecture on high Q oscillators.